In this section, you'll learn how to load models from a site known as TF Hub, which many folk from the wider TensorFlow community have deployed their pre-trained models to. For this exercise, you'll be working with a model that expects an image as an input instead of a simple number. So let's get started. Now first, what exactly is TensorFlow Hub? But it should be noted that the ML community like to create model gardens, which is basically a website where people upload their raw saved models. One example from the TensorFlow ecosystem is TensorFlow Hub that's shown here, from which you can then download the raw models as you need. However, it should be noted that the documentation for these might be minimal and the work could be of varying quality or production readiness, and the developer may not have spent time writing an easy to use interface to the model itself. In this case, just like before, it's typically left to you to write the code that can transform your data into a form that can be input to the model, which is known as pre-processing. And of course, to write the logic to take the output numbers from the model and do something useful with it, known as post-processing. Let's head over to TF Hub to select a model for this exercise. First, open a new browser window and head on over to tfhub.dev as shown. You should see a landing page that looks something similar to this. The first thing you want to do is filter the model format to only show models that are compatible with TensorFlow.js using the filters menu on the left as highlighted. Great, you now see a whole bunch of models with potentially very scary looking names appear on the right as shown. Remember, most of these names are just explaining the architecture of the model to help ML folk choose the right one for their needs. Next, expand the problem domain filter along the top of the filter section so we can refine this huge list further. You can now see a whole bunch of potentially useful model types that you might want to use. Scroll down and select Pose Detection for this exercise. Once you click out of the filters area, the results should update as you see here on the right. All of these models have some connection to Pose Detection. Find the model called MoveNet slash Single Pose slash Lightning, which is a super fast model for pose detection that was created by a team at Google Research and click on it to be taken to its documentation page. Now this page has a whole bunch of useful information in order to use the model. The first thing you'll need to do is switch to the documentation for JavaScript. By default, the selected tab is for Python users, which is not what you want. In the image above, you need to set the second tab for the JavaScript documentation as shown. Great. Now as machine learning engineers, there's three key things we're looking for in order to use the model. The first is what inputs does the model expect? The second, what outputs does it produce? And the third, is there any example usage code that we can use to get started faster? Now, if you scroll down the page, you'll find text around each one of these areas. So let's dive deeper. Now, first we see a section explaining the inputs. From this, you can quickly determine that the model expects a tensor of shape 192 by 192 by three, which essentially represents an image of 192 by 192 pixels with red, green, and blue channels. Very similar to what you saw in the prior sections when learning about tensors that could store image data just with a different pixel size. Now, more importantly, the numbers contained in this tensor should be of type int32, and all values should be in the range of zero to 255. It should also be noted that other models may expect different values as inputs, so always check the documentation. Now, moving on to the outputs, you can see it produces a tensor of shape 11173, and the type of those outputs will be a 32-bit floating point number, meaning there'll be some number with a decimal point in them and not a whole number, which would be called an integer. Now, this is nice to know, but on its own doesn't help us understand what these numbers represent. Reading further, you can discover what's actually contained in this tensor 1D output object. The final axis of the output tensor has a length of three. This means after all is said and done, there are three numbers you can access for each item in the array of outputs. The first two of these numbers represent the Y X coordinates of the found pose points in the input image. And note the order here, instead of X Y image coordinates, the developers of this model for some reason chose Y X. So the first number will be the Y value and the second number, the X value. Furthermore, these values are normalized between zero and one. And let's take a moment to understand normalization. Let's say you've got a bunch of numbers stored in an array that can take the range from minus 100 to 100. 
In another array, you've got the numbers that range from 0 to 1000. If you wanted to compare a value from the first array with a value from the second array, it would be kind of tricky, as the number 50, for example, in each case, would be at very different ends of the scale for what it represents, as shown on the slide. In the first array, 50 is quite a high value, and in the second array, 50 is overall a low value for whatever was being recorded. It's sometimes more convenient to convert the numbers to be in a form that's easier to compare so they're always in the same range of values. This is essentially known as normalization. It's quite common in machine learning to normalize numbers between 0 and 1. In order to do this, you first find the difference between the maximum number that can occur and the minimum number that can occur for each set of numbers. In the first example here, you can see the range is 200, and in the second, the range is 1000. Next, for each value in each set of numbers, you'd subtract the minimum value that exists in that particular set. Taking the example number of 50 like before, in the first example, 50 minus negative 100 is 150. And for a value of 50 in the second example, then 50 minus 0 is still 50. Now the final step is to divide the number you just calculated by the range that you previously found. So again, for the first example, 150 divided by 200 is 0.75, and in the second example, 50 divided by 1000 is 0.05. Now, when you compare 0.75 and 0.05, it's much clearer to see that 0.05 is much lower overall. Now, returning to our documentation, you can now see that the output numbers for y and x are normalized to the input image size. What this means is that instead of giving you an image pixel value as an output for a single post point that was found, you'll get a number between 0 and 1. So to convert that back to real pixel values on the original input image tensor that had a size of 192 by 192 pixels in y and x, you can simply multiply these normalized numbers by 192 to find its true pixel position in that input image. So if the return values were 0 0.5 and 0 0.25, that would be a yx position of 9648 in the original image for that found point. Now, what's particularly useful about this normalized representation is that often your original image may be a different size altogether. Even though the input to the model was 192 by 192 pixels, if the original image was of the same aspect ratio, so in this case also a square, maybe 1024 by 1024 pixels, as you have the normalized coordinates being returned, you can simply multiply the normalized y value by 1024 and the x value also by 1024 in this case, to find the true position in that larger image too. And that's very useful and convenient when you want to draw something on the original image that you had in the correct position. Now do take note, however, if the original image was a different aspect ratio, then you would need to scale values accordingly in each dimension to account for that. Now moving on through the documentation, you can see that the third point in the numbers returned is the confidence of the pose point that it thinks it's found. So here, a value of 0.9 would represent 90% confident that the point was correctly labeled. You can also see in the output section that there are 17 of these key points that are returned each time. Each key point represents a different part of the body and the order of the points in the array is shown in the documentation. For example, the first point in the array of 17 will be the nose and the second point will be the left eye and so on. Heading on to usage, the developers have kindly provided a TensorFlow.js example of how to load the model. As this MoveNet model is highly optimized, it's in the form of a graph model instead of a layers model you previously saw. In this case, you use the tf.loadgraph model function that you saw in the previous section to load it. The only difference when loading directly from TensorFlow Hub is that there's a second parameter that you pass with an object whose property from TF Hub is set to true. This is a special use case just for when you're loading the model directly from TF Hub hosting only. If you had downloaded the model files and hosted them on your own website, you would load those files as you learned in the prior section without needing to use the second parameter. Now, one thing to point out at this stage is that sometimes the documentation is stale or out of date after model creators have pushed an update to the model on TF Hub. For this reason, when specifying the model URL to load from TF Hub, 
always copy the current live version, which can be found at the top of the documentation and clicking the copy URL button as shown. If you prefer to download the model, you can do that too using the button right below it. Okay, you now know everything you need to start using this model in a basic manner. Now there are many other things you would need to read up from their GitHub documentation to use this model as efficiently and as fast as possible, but that's outside the scope of this tutorial. In the next section, it's time to head over to Glitch to try this for yourself and follow along. See you there.